Hello, my name is Teresa Tucker and I'm a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And let me get situated. Um, Stampin' Up! was established in 1988. It's a global paper crafting company that specializes in decorative rubber stamps and accessories for greeting cards, craft projects, home decor, and much more. And I have been with this company since 2006. So when I say that I've been with this company since 2006, it hasn't been a continual um, demonstrator. So I didn't start out uh, running a business. I started out as a hobby demonstrator. So um, a whole lot less pressure and just a lot of fun. So, um, but now I'm a demonstrator. I'm running this as a business. Uh, I'm getting ready to retire from the University of Illinois and I'd like something else to do to help me just earn a little bit of uh, play money. So, um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to make these four cards right here, but I'm going to share some other things with you first. Okay. So during the month of May, Stampin' Up! has a, um, a special, a kit join, a demonstrator joining special. Um, so these are the five new in colors that Stampin' Up! came out with. Starry Sky, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, Parakeet Party, and Orchid Oasis. Now, not only did they come out with those colors in the ink, they also came out with grid paper that also matches those colors. This is just a sample of what the sweet sorbet would look like. I've ordered my grid paper and it's probably will be here in about a week or so. These here, this is the cardstock. So this here is Orchid Oasis. This one's Parakeet Party. This one is Starry Sky. This one here is Sweet Sorbet. And this one is Tahitian Tide. So if you like these colors, you can get all of these colors. You can get everything that I've shown you here, plus the grid paper, for free if you want to sign up for the starter kit with Stampin' Up! And it does, there's no obligation. You just, um, you just join. You get to choose $125 worth of merchandise, absolutely anything that you want in the catalog for $99. So you choose $125 for $99. The shipping is free. On top of these things that you would get, you would also get a past paper pumpkin kit and I don't know which one that would be, but it's one that has been out in the past. So that would also be included in your kit. There would be some business um, stuff in with the kit as well, but all of that's free. It's um, They just throw that in there. So um, if you have any questions or anything, then just let me know. You can join my team if you go out to TeresaTucker.net. You will see at the top, it'll say join. And you can click on that and then join my team. And I would love to have you. Okay. Set that out of the way. So this evening, I wanted to kind of focus on something that was in this June, this January to June catalog. It's going to expire at the end of June. So I just wanted to make a couple of things in here. This is our new annual catalog. This came out, it was became available to customers on May the 3rd. And it's got, oh, so much beautiful stuff in here. I mean, you would not believe. So these tabs here that I've got, these are the, the stamp sets that I have purchased. And I'm probably going to um, start showing some of these next month. So we've got a couple more weeks in this month. So, but I just did want to show you a little bit of what 
we have here. This is a really cute, sweet songbird. It's adorable. And it has a punch that comes with it. And the framed occasions. Now, the framed occasions, there are dies that go with it. And there's a couple of different stamp sets that those dies will go with. But anyway, I'm going to schedule a walkthrough on this catalog probably next week or the week after. I'm not exactly sure when. I've got a lot of um, events coming up, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to squeeze it in, but I will get it in. And so tonight, um, there were the cards that we're making tonight use the New Horizons designer series paper. It is six by six. And you can see here all of the different papers. And I've used several pieces already. Let's see what it says. Yeah, there's 48 all together and they're all double sided. So they're, they're really pretty. And another um, another designer series paper that I'm using tonight is called Hues of Happiness. Now, this is gorgeous. This is one of the new papers that just came out. And I'll show you a few of these. And I don't know that these are not in order, I don't think. Okay, so this is one side and then this is the other. Look at the beautiful flowers. In this, the Hues of Happiness bundle comes with dies that actually cut these flowers out. So you can cut those out and put them on your cards or on your gift packaging. And here's this side and this one. Here's this one and more beautiful flowers. These are really tiny flowers on this side. And over here is a um, sort of ombre, different flowers, different colors. Here's another. These are tiny little flowers on the back. These are just like little X's and a bunch of flowers. That is so beautiful. That would just make a gorgeous front for a card. And we'll do some of that too. Not tonight, but we will do that in the future. So please, if you um, are watching my video, if you're watching it live on Facebook, or if you are um, watching the replay or the, the YouTube video, I would love it if you would just let me know that you are here and leave me a comment or ask me a question. I'm happy to help with anything that um, you have questions about. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, I've set a time limit for an hour and a half, but I'll see if I can finish a little bit sooner than that. So um, this first card... These are all of our pieces. And the card is, it's got a balmy blue on the back side. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's the balmy blue. I put it on the back side of this cardstock. And just to give it a little bit of interest. So we're going to start out by, um, let's see. It's been a while since I've made these, so let me see. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put this, um, this is from the, this is from a different designer series paper. I wonder if I have sun prints. Yeah, this is from the sun prints bundle. So we're going to put this down first. So this bundle 
love and happiness is uh, very versatile. There are lots of uh, occasions that you could create a card for. This is the stamp set here. And it's got all of these sayings in there. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut out the heart. So this bundle comes with this embossing folder and these dies. And it's really neat because you basically you just put the uh, die in here and then you you set your cardstock on top of it and we try to center it so let's see if I can center that on this side <laughs> not too bad for just laying it on there huh does it look straight I'll try to get it straight nope All right, so this will not fit through the mini stamp cut and emboss machine. So I'm going to turn over here behind me and I'm gonna run this through the, the emboss machine. I might say that the emboss machine it's got plate number one and it tells you which plates to put with it when you're going to emboss something so when using the standard embossing folders which is what this one is that we have I'm going to use plate one and two plate threes try something else. I'm having a little trouble getting this to go through. So I don't think this is a 3D embossing folder, but I'm going to run it through with plate one and plate four. be a 3d embossing folder I didn't have it marked as such just gonna snip this I haven't had trouble with it cutting before so I'm not sure why it didn't cut all the way through on that section but Set that aside and I need another piece of cardstock it'll be three and three quarter by three and a half Three quarter. So I think I was just going to 
um, I wasn't going to run that through the, the stamp cut and emboss machine because I already had one cut out. So I think that the Okay, so for this one here, I just need to, I'm just going to run this die through like this all by itself. And I'm going to use a little piece of washi tape to hold it in place. And I'll be right back. So we're going to put this down, but first we're going to put this piece of balmy blue behind it. This is three by three and a quarter. And I'm going to cut just a little bit off the edge. So I've got a little bit of wiggle room. There we go. I'll put multi-purpose liquid glue around the edge, all the way around the edge. And I just want to look at this and make sure that I am having the right side up. You can tell there is a little bit of a difference. This is not as... Um, you can't see the stitching around here as well as you can on this side. So that's what I was looking for. Okay, and then we're going to put this on and we're going to pop it up on dimensionals. We'll pull off this adhesive backing. And then we want to we want to center this like this. Try to get it right in the exact same spot. Get it right inside there. Okay. Now we're going to take some ribbon, and this is the gray granite ribbon. It's a one quarter inch ribbon. And we're going to put this around the bottom here. We'll hold this in place with many glue dots. So the way I like to do this is just put a mini glue dot on one side, line this up where I want it to be, hold this in place, and then tuck this under like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and put the glue dot on. Make sure it's even. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and 
we'll make a bow with this last. But we're going to go ahead and stamp congratulations. On a scrap piece of basic white. We're going to do this with Versamark. So we're going to do some um, powder embossing. So we need our embossing tray. We need our Versamark. I don't see the Versa mark. That's the memento. Well, that's odd. I had everything together. Okay. Well, we'll skip the embossing. I'm sorry about that. I will um, add that part at the end of the video so that you can see how that's done. That is weird. Okay, I'm sorry about that. We'll add this later. So we'll go ahead and put this down. Center that here. And then we're going to use little rhinestones. These are rhinestone basic jewels. Just put a few of these on the front. We'll put one here. Let's see, where did I put those? We'll put one here. And we'll wait until we're ready to put this on. We'll go ahead and make this bow. You just have to work with it a little bit just to get it the size that you want it. And I'll put this down with a mini glue dot that right in the center there. Put this on the card. And then I'll use my ribbon scissors and cut that off. Okay. All right. So there's that. And like I said, I will add this at the end and I'll uh, record that so that you can see how that's done. And I apologize <coughs> for that. Okay, so the next card is the Wedding Wishes. And for this card, I did go ahead and do some of the work in advance just to save some time, but I did want to demonstrate this. So make sure that this is opening the way that it's supposed to. I have done it backwards before. 
This is that New Horizon 6x6 designer series paper. Let me put this here. And then for this one, I did the same thing. I used the, um, I just cut this out with the, with the die again. So I'll do that. piece of cardstock out and I'm going to cut this three and a half by three and three quarter again and you kind of want to make sure that you have your cardstock cardstock up against this edge it keeps it straight and then pull the cutter towards you that way the cardstock won't move while you're cutting I've had that happen before I'm like what and then it doesn't come out straight okay so that's correct Cut this out and I will be right back. Okay, so what I did with this card was I took these three colors here. It's the light fresh freesia, the light granny apple green, and the light petal pink. And I just started just coloring in these flowers randomly. Not in any particular order. I just tried not to get several of them of the same color right next to each other. So this one, I did everything in Fresh Freesia in the petal pink, and then I filled in with the leaves and such with the Granny Apple Green. So that's how this is done. Now these are called Stampin' Blends, and they come as a two-pack. You'll get a light and a dark. That's how I did that. So yeah, you just uh, color in those stems and the leaves. Okay, that's how that works. Very simple. And I've got two different samples here. We'll put this down. Adhere this to the front of our card on top of the New Horizons designer series paper. We're going to put this in the center. And hopefully get it straight. And then I'm going to put this on dimensionals and I'll pop it up here. These just make for a very pretty card for weddings and anniversaries and so forth. So, engagements. I made a couple of these cards for my daughter. Her friend was getting married, so I made a couple for her. It looks so dainty. Okay, so here I... I used the Granny Apple Green for this, but then I also started thinking about the petal pink. So I think I'm going to stamp this with the Memento Tuxedo Black stamp pad, and then and I'm going to put it on the petal pink and see how we like that. 
So you just want to ink it up. Generally, I will use my Stamparatus when I use the black ink because it doesn't always come out really, yeah, it doesn't come out really uh, <laughs> heavy. So let's go ahead and grab that. <clears throat> So this is the Stamparatus. It comes with two plates like this. There's one that goes here and here. And this is perfect for lining up stamps so that they so they stamp exactly where you want them. Um, for this purpose though, I'm using it so that I can get a deeper, clearer image. Clean this off. And I'll show you a little trick. This is a piece of plastic that Stampin' Up! used to sell when they used a different method of lining up stamps. And I kept it, so it comes in real handy for this purpose here. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter how straight this is, but I'm just showing you how I usually do this. So if that's exactly where I'd want it on the card, then I would remove the plastic and stamp it. It's kind of nice to know exactly where, and whether or not it's straight, where your stamp is, where you're stamping at. Clean that off. Okay, so we're going to ink this up again. Like that. And we'll stamp it down. And ink it up again. This just gives it a much crisper, cleaner image. See, that's pretty cool. I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, and that's it. So now we'll clean the stamp. Put this back on my block. Put this away. Close up my ink. Otherwise, I'll probably get it all over everything. Okay, so for this, we're going to use this die to cut out this label. So we'll get it centered here. Put this here to hold it in place. I'll run it through. Well, actually, let me get this one out. I got a mini right here. I can run this through the mini. It's small enough. I'm going to use plate number one and plate number two. I'll set this on here and run this through. It's very easy to use. Set it aside. And then if you're using washi tape to hold these down, go ahead and um, take the washi tape off, but be careful. If the washi tape is fairly new, then it can tear, might take off a layer from the paper. So we don't want that to happen. So you just want to be careful. <clears throat> so there, we're gonna put this up on foam adhesive sheets. I like the foam adhesive sheets because it, um, it, it's very, uh, it just, it's a lot sturdier so that you don't have, um, a lot of leeway, a lot of give there. To me, it just seems more secure. Not that it's going to fall off with dimensionals, but 
um, it's just firmer. I usually cut these in strips after I get them. Some of them I leave larger, but you just want to make sure that it doesn't show on the other side. You want to make sure that it's cut down. And this one, if it doesn't, if you don't get it on straight or if it's not cut down all the way, you can go ahead and use your scissors, your snips. I, I use these just for sticky stuff. Anything with adhesive on it, I'll use those scissors. And now we will tie a bow. This is from a pack. This is one eighth inch ribbon in petal pink. It is in our current catalog. It comes with um, this color and then I believe the other one is and write it down. It looks like Misty Moonlight. It is. It's Misty Moonlight. <laughs> and that is already um, retired. So, <laughs> and just need a little piece of the mini glue dot and put that on the back. Should I put this side? And I don't know why I have such a long piece. I didn't need all that. So I'll trim this up. that all right so now we have the 21 to 23 in color jewels this is what I used on the front of the card and this has now um, I don't know that this is in the new catalog actually they usually come out with new ones different um, that's nice <laughs> stuck to me so this is fresh freesia that I'm putting on here and I have some more I thought I had two packages I do oh, that one's not open yet I'll just use these So you can also use this end of your take a pick tool and pick it up like this. It's probably easier that way. Um, let's see, what else do we want? Let's put another one up here, similar to what I did on that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put one more so that it's... Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. So it's an odd number. They say odd numbered is better. Usually I'll put three, but if I put more, I try to do an odd number. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that card. Let me know what you think. I'm going to set this one aside. I'm still at a loss as to where my Versamark went to. That's just crazy. Okay, on to the next card. We have got two more. Okay.
Okay, so this one is a Valentine greeting card. And again, you can put whatever greeting you want on there. It doesn't have to be Valentine's. I like to make up some extra cards just for the spring, for, for the weddings and so forth. So I'm using a basic black card base, eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter, folded in half. And then this is the Coastal Cabana. This is five and a quarter by four. Now, if you're going to use a dark card base like this and you want to write something on the inside, you're going to have to put another piece of cardstock, in, cardstock inside, which is probably what I did here. Yeah. Okay. So for this, now we need to um, run this through the embossing with the embossing folder. And we're going to use this die again because we want the heart cut out in the middle. Try to get that lined up so that it's straight. And that's what this line right here is for. When you're using a larger piece of cardstock, you use that line there just to make sure that You've got it straight. And so in that case, it's easier to do it this way. Okay, it's a little bit higher here, but that's fine because I'm going to put my greeting down there. So let me run this through and I'll be right back. We're going to put this here with our multi-purpose liquid glue. So I will post the recipes for these cards on my blog afterwards. And we're going to pop that up. I think I'll put a different greeting on here, though. I really don't need a Valentine's greeting right now. For this here doesn't have to be perfect just just center it right there as best as you can so don't worry about it all right so let's see if I don't use the Valentine's which other one should I use Celebrating your anniversary. Okay. 
And I'm going to stamp this with the Coastal Cabana. Since I'm going to cut this out after I get it stamped, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Although it kind of looks like it's... And you just want to hold it for a second and come straight up so that you don't end up with a halo around the outside. So that's when you're stamping something, especially with the red rubber, just need to be careful that you go straight down and straight up. If you get it around the edges here, then you can transfer that to your cardstock. It's not the end of the world, but you um, it will leave a halo, what we call a halo. All right. Oh. I better look at this a little closer. You know what? I don't think that's going to fit. Well, that's dirty. All right. Let's flip it over and let's choose a different. You know what? Maybe I could get by with a different. Um. see here. I was using this is the lovely label punch and I will see if I can cut this down a little bit and make this work. I'm going to take about, oh, a quarter of an inch off of here on this side. And a quarter of an inch off on this side. And I'm going to put this through here. Probably don't need it quite that long. We'll see how it ends up, though. So after you open your punch up, this punch here, it's the Lovely Labels punch, and it will accommodate several different widths of cardstock. So you just slide it through. And then you want to center this piece here in the center of your cardstock. And you can kind of use the two pieces here on either side as sort of a guide too. Let's see that you have it even. Okay. We'll do that again. Okay, it's not quite in the center. I think it's going to be fine though. So we're going to take this piece here. Now let's see, what was this? Was this? I think it's a quarter. No, oh, it's a half an inch. I am going to use this piece here. Take this down to three quarters of an inch. And you have to guess to see how this doesn't even look straight. All right, 
So we'll cut this one off here. Now we're going to put this through here again and do the same thing and try to get it in the center. I don't know if you can see that or not. And do the same thing on this side. And so that's how we're going to do that. We're going to put it on there just like that. And I'm going to use a, um, what did I do with this one? Add our foam adhesive sheet. And I'm just going to lay this on here gently until I can see that it is straight and it's pretty even on both ends. And then we'll use, whoops, we'll use a couple of these. I thought I had another adhesive sheet in here. I don't, but I have enough pieces I can do this. take the backing off of the foam adhesive sheets and we'll just set this right here and then we have these loose flower flourishes and these are still in the new catalog so that's good Now for this, we need to use just a little bit of glue to put them down. The small one there. I must be getting to the bottom of my bottle. Be careful, don't squeeze it too hard so too much of it comes out. There we go. This will take a moment to dry because it's resin. Yeah, let's see, do we have another color? We'll do the purple. Go 
feels like that there's something sticky on the back already. I'm going to get a different one. Okay. And then we just have one more. And this is the last one. Okay, so for this one, it's a little different. Um, let's see, I'm using the Hues of Happiness Designer Series paper. This is Gorgeous Grape, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And we're going to, just double checking the size and making sure I've got the right size here. So again, this time we're going to cut out the heart. And you can see that I've got it towards the top of the card. Could get it a little more centered, I suppose. <laughs> Moving around a little bit here to see if I can get it straight. I don't know of a better way of doing this, so if you know of a better way, let me know. Just keeping just enough pressure on it so that the die doesn't fall out. Okay. I'll run this through and I'll be right back. Collecting a lot of hearts. All right, so for this one, um, what I did was I added this piece to the bottom. And I did that so that I could make this about five and a quarter. Whoops, not that one, this one. About five and a quarter inches long I'll put some adhesive on the back of here and I'm going to set this at five and a quarter And then I'm going to set this up here. So this is one reason why I really like the grid paper. Makes it easier to line things up. And you want to get all of your, your layers on straight. And so on the back side, we're going to put this piece on. Oh, I got a little bit of glue on it.
we do have something that will take adhesive off. If you get a little bit of adhesive on it, there's a, there's an eraser that will remove that adhesive. So if it gets sticky, then I'll do that. And then this goes on the front. Like so. Got a little bit of glue on my fingers. Move this over a little bit more. Have wipes handy. Always, always. Okay, so we're going to put congratulations. And we're going to use gorgeous grape ink This is a, I forget what they call this, Stampin' Scrub. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Um, that's what they always told us to use when we're cleaning our rubber stamps, our red rubber stamps, because the um, spray that goes on there is supposed to condition the rubber. We've never had any trouble <laughs> with the rubber not being conditioned, so I don't think that it's really necessary any anymore. People just clean it with the water. I don't know where I got this hair from. Okay. Get out our mini stamp cut and emboss machine. Here's our label. I'm going to put that up here. Let's see if I have enough foam sheets to put this on. I thought I had more, but this is, I have I'll have plenty here. I don't really need much. Right there. And then here I've got the silver and clear epoxy essentials. I'm going to use the, uh, the silver tonight. Okay, so I used the diamond shaped ones. Mm 
you don't really think about your card needing any sort of embellishments like this, but once you put it on, you realize it's how nice it looks. Just makes a little bit of difference. Sets it apart a little bit. There you go. So there's that one. So that is all four cards. This one. And this one. And the wedding wishes. And this one here. <laughs> As soon as I find my Versa mark, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. I'm going to end it, and then I'll uh, locate my Versa mark and get this added on to the very end. So thank you very much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. If you would please comment, like, share my video, it would really help me. Um, it'll help draw more attention to my videos so that hopefully I can um, build my business that way. Um, it's the algorithms that Google, Google and Facebook uses to, um, to determine who's going to get the, um, extra, um, viewings and so forth. Oh, hello, I'm back. Um, so... When I did this video earlier, I had lost track of my Bursa mark, so I wasn't able to show you the embossing. I forgot that I had moved it and put it um, up with my punches so that I could keep track of it, and then I couldn't keep track of it. So one thing you need for embossing when you're using detail powder is a heat tool, which Stampin' Up! sells. And let's untangle my cord. Okay, so one of the things that is um, pretty important, I think, which Stampin' Up! doesn't sell anymore, it's called an embossing buddy. And basically all it is is a little sack that has um, something like cornstarch, something like that in it. And what that does, when you put it on your cardstock, it prevents the Versamark from sticking anywhere else, or it prevents the detail powder from sticking anywhere else, which is important um, when you're trying to uh, emboss something like this card here is the one that we were recreating. And so that's embossing powder that I've used on there. And then when you heat it up, then it gets shiny like that. And it stands up off of the cardstock. And you don't want a bunch of silver everywhere else. So, okay. So let's see here. We're going to use, congratulations. So we're just going to put it in the Versa mark. And again, you want to make sure that you're careful that you don't get it around the edges. Because if you get it around the edges, it's going to transfer to your cardstock and it's going to leave a mark. And then the detail powder is going to want to stick to it. So you can't see it right now, but when I add this detail powder, I'm using the silver. When I add this. In just a moment, please. Okay. So then you're going to shake it off like that. And sometimes you can um, just go over it twice. I don't know that it does a whole lot of good. I haven't really compared it to not reapplying it. Set this aside for now. I'm going to get the, any other residue off. Grab 
my stamp and scrub clean my red rubber stamp okay and now we will heat this up and you can watch and see how this changes you'll know when it's um, when it's done so I'll hold it up here a little bit so you can see it You see it changing? So there it is set. We'll give it a moment to cool off just to make sure that when I run this through the emboss, well, not through the emboss, well, the stamp cut and emboss machine with this tag label that it doesn't come off or stick to the label. Stick to the die. Nope. My tape isn't even holding down much. <laughs> it's getting old. I have to grab some more. So I'm going to run this through this the mini stamp cut and emboss machine. So when you're using your stamp cut and emboss machine, it doesn't matter if it is the mini like this or if it is the larger one, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you run your dies through in different areas so that it doesn't um, just wear in one spot all the time. So you don't want to just constantly put it in the middle. Throw it away. Okay. And, <coughs> excuse me, I'll just mention that I have labeled this as the top. These are both twos but I labeled this one as the top because I want to make sure that it it stays on top the plates have a tendency to warp a little over time so I'm told that if you just keep this one just keep one dedicated to the top then it's gonna wear a lot better then it won't get wonky Okay, so you see how that turned out. It's pretty cool, huh? And, of course, I'm going to put some... I'll put some foam adhesive sheet on here. Let me cut this down a little bit. So I would appreciate it if you would tell me what you think of my cards. Or if you have any questions, let me know. If you'd like to host a party or anything, get, get some of your friends together and, and then we can, we can, um, make some cards or whatever you would like to do. There's other things too. We make uh, gift bags and um, home decor and things like that. So 
I'm getting ready to create a scrapbook page. So I'll show you what that's like too. So, okay, so that's our card, but hang on just one second. I think I need to put some, yeah, some more little rhinestones on it. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I've got a cold. Ooh, it's coming in tight. Sometimes if that happens, um, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'm like I said, I've got a cold. Sometimes if your ribbon starts to um come untied, take a piece of the a mini glue dot sometimes not even a whole piece just part of it put it on the end of your take a pick tool and put it try to get it up inside of the knot so I'll squeeze that together to try to get that up inside and then push down on it and it'll leave the um, the mini glue dot inside and now it won't uh, unravel or come untied or what have you so okay so that's that card I hope you liked it and um, and again thank you for joining me and I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do this during the initial um, demonstration but um, that's how you emboss with um, powdered detail embossing powder so thank you again bye bye